Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on the internal jugular vein anatomy. For short-term central venous line placement, the right IJV is the first site of choice because it is accessible and has a low complication rate, but the subclavian vein is preferred for long-term CVL. Anatomy of the IJV The internal jugular vein originates from the jugular foramen and is a continuation of the jugular bulb which drains the sigmoid sinus. It ends posterior to the sternoclavicular joint where it joins the subclavian vein. The course of the IJV It lies within the carotid sheath along with the carotid artery and the vagus nerve. The glossopharyngeal nerve and the hypoglossal nerve passes forward between the IJV and the internal carotid artery. The vagus nerve descends between and behind the vein and the artery in the carotid sheath. Relations of the IJV Relationship with the carotid artery from superior to inferior part of the neck. First, the IJV lies posterior, then moves laterally, then anterior laterally to the carotid artery. Structures anterior to the IJV includes the skin, subcutaneous tissue, platysma, sternocleidomastoid, loose fascia of the carotid sheath, the carotid artery and the vagus nerve at the top of the IJV's course. Medial to the IJV, there are the internal and common carotid artery at the middle of its course, cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, 12, and the deep cervical limb nodes. Posterior to the IJV, lateral part of the C1, prevertebral fascia, vertebral muscles, cervical vertebrae transverse processes, sympathetic chain, dome of the pleura at the root of the neck, thoracic duct for the left IJV. Tributaries of the IJV, the inferior petrosal vein, pharyngeal veins, occipital vein, facial vein, lingual vein, superior thyroid and middle thyroid veins. A side note on the external jugular vein, it commences in the substance of the parotid gland at the level of the mandible. As it descends, it crosses the sternocleidomastoid to reach the midpoint of the clavicle then enters the subclavian vein. Complications of central venous line insertion is minimized using ultrasound guidance due to the variation between the position of the internal jugular vein and the carotid artery. The NICE guideline report in 2002 recommends routine use of ultrasound for IJV localization and cannulation. Possible complications include carotid artery puncture or cannulation, palpate the carotid artery continuously to minimize risk or use ultrasound, pneumothorax or hemothorax, a high approach might minimize risk, thoracic duct injury resulting in possible chylothorax. A way to minimize this risk is to cannulate the right IJV instead of the left or use a high approach. All complications can be minimized using ultrasound guidance. Phrenic nerve injury. The phrenic nerve is located here, posterior to the internal jugular vein and lateral to the common carotid artery, anterior to the scalenus anterior, at the level of T1 and T2. Intrapleural placement. Use high approach to minimize risk or ultrasound. Chest x-ray after a CVR insertion to check for the position of the CVR. Air embolism can occur. To minimize this risk, use head down position during insertion and removal of the CVL. Arterial venous fistula formation. Cardiac arrhythmias. Avoid having the guide wire or CVL being too deep and in contact with the heart. Use continuous cardiac monitoring. Phlebitis. Thromboembolism. Infection. 
12% of CVL has significant infections, the mortality of CVL-related sepsis can be as high as 25% and results in increased length of stay and cost of care. The external and endoluminal surfaces of the CVL is rapidly coated with plasma proteins, which becomes colonized by bacteria migrating from the skin. This process takes a few hours. Symptomatic bacteremia occurs when a threshold number of organisms is reached. This process takes 3 to 4 days. And the commonest organisms implicated include coagulase negative Staphylococci, Staphylococcus aureus. These two accounts for around 60% of all infections. Other species involved are Enterococci and Pseudomonas. Measures to reduce the risk of infection of CVL includes using an aseptic technique, use of ultrasound guidance, meticulous central venous line after care, and choosing the subclavian or internal jugular vein rather than the femoral vein. Aseptic technique. Use real-time checklists to ensure compliance with sterility. Empower the observer to stop the procedure during violations of the sterile technique. Essential components of a CVL insertion checklist include Operator hygiene Using either alcohol hand rub or antiseptic soap Chlorhexidine-based skin prep Allow air dry before draping Maximum sterile barrier precautions such as head mask sterile gloves and sterile gown, full body sterile drape, sterility of the site or equipment maintained throughout procedure. If sterility is breached, procedure stop and correction taken. Placement of a proper transparent occlusive dressing with chlorhexidine bio patch while the sterile field is intact. Measures for CVL aftercare includes daily bathing of ICU patients of more than 2 months old with chlorhexidine. Sterile dressing should be transparent and changed every 5 to 7 days with chlorhexidine skin prep. Change the dressing if not intact or soiled. Prior to excess of pots, disinfect with chlorhexidine or alcohol. Assess daily for the need for CVL removal. Adjunctive approaches includes antiseptic containing hub or connector caps, antimicrobial or antiseptic impregnated catheters, chlorhexidine sponge dressings and antimicrobial lock therapy. Practices that do not decrease the CVL infection rates include antimicrobial ointment at CVL insertion site except for dialysis lines, placement of PICC rather than CVL, systemic antibiotic prophylaxis, routine catheter replacement, and routine blood cultures drawn from CVLs. Central venous line insertion for the internal jugular vein. The internal jugular vein is the approach of choice because it has lower risk than subclavian approach, such as reduced risk of hemothorax or pneumothorax, and the right IJV is better as it provides a direct route to the heart and this results in less risk for misplacement. Indications for CVL insertion includes to measure the central venous pressure, administration of certain drugs such as inotropes, amiodarone and caustic drugs like chemotherapy, parenteral nutrition, intravenous access, aspiration of air from the heart in air embolism, renal replacement therapy, volume resuscitation, transvenous pacing wire insertion, pulmonary artery catheterization. Absolute contraindications include infection at the insertion site and ipsilateral abnormal anatomy. Relative contraindications include coagulopathy, a non-compressible site, ipsilateral carotid endarterectomy, newly inserted cardiac pacemaker leads, thrombus in the vein, venous stenosis, current or possible thrombolysis, uncooperative patient. Typical steps of the Seldinger technique, which is catheter over guide wire insertion. Use ultrasound guidance whenever possible, such as a high-frequency linear array ultrasound probe. 
Obtain the patient's consent. Prepare equipment and resuscitation facilities. Remember to flush the catheter lumens with saline. Monitoring of the patient such as ECG and vital signs. Positioning the patient, ideally head down with the head turned to the contralateral side to distend the vein. The head down position avoids air embolism and fills the vein to ease cannulation. However, it risks compromising cardiac function and can precipitate acute left ventricular failure in patients with pre-existing cardiac disease. In patients with raised ICP, the head down position is also not ideal. If cervical injury use manual inline stabilization or choose other routes. Full aseptic technique, don head mask, gloves and gowns, use the ultrasound probe sterile cover with sterile ultrasound gel, clean the skin with 2% chlorhexidine plus 70% isopropyl alcohol and drape the patient. If ultrasound is not available, the landmark method can be used. The point of insertion is at the apex of a triangle formed by the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid, as shown here the sternal head and the clavicular head. Feel for the carotid pulse and infiltrate 1% lidocaine just lateral to this. Insert the introducer needle while aspirating continuously at the apex of the triangle formed by the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid towards the ipsilateral nipple at a 45 degree angle. The failure rate and complication rate of a landmark approach approaches 10%. If ultrasound method is used, do not advance the needle if the needle tip is not seen. Watch the needle tip as it enters the vein. There are two orientations for vascular line placement, out of plane and in plane. This is the in plane method. The IJV is differentiated from the carotid artery as it is compressible, non-pulsatile and varies with respiration. Probe positions in the short axis view. Make sure that as the needle is advanced, move the probe distally so that the needle can be seen entering the vein. As soon as blood is aspirated, put down the ultrasound probe and hold the introducer needle in position and thread the guide wire through the needle. The guide wire should pass easily. If there is resistance when treading the guide wire, lower the angle of the needle and try to advance the guide wire. If resistance is still present, remove the needle with the guide wire, apply pressure to compress the puncture site and attempt a second puncture once the bleeding has stopped. Resistance when treading the guide wire can be due to many reasons such as malposition of the tip of the needle or the guide wire, such as when the needle punctures through and through the vein. If the wire is removed alone with the needle left in place, there is risk of the tip of the guide wire shearing off. Do not forcefully push in the guide wire if there is resistance as this risk complications such as arterial puncture, pneumothorax and hemothorax. If the wire treads easily into the needle, insert to 30cm, remove the needle while keeping hold of the wire at all times, make a nick at the skin with a scalpel at the insertion point of the needle. Gently thread the dilator over the wire. Confirm with ultrasound the position of the guide wire before dilation. It is not wise to dilate a carotid artery in case of a malposition guide wire. Insert the dilator only as far as into the vein. A loss of resistance will be felt as the dilator enters the vein. Do not insert the dilator too far due to risk of pneumothorax. Do not forcefully thread in the dilator as the guide wire can become kinked. A kinked guide wire causes difficulty in insertion and removal of the dilator and the CVL. A possible reason for difficulty in dilation is the toughness of the skin and the subcutaneous tissue and this can be solved by incision with the scalpel. Keep hold of the guide wire at all times and do not lose the guide wire during dilation. Next step is to remove the dilator, keeping hold of the wire and thread the flush CVL over the wire and then remove the wire. Do not dispose the guide wire as it may be needed later in case of a failed CVL insertion. Positioning of the CVL, 
should be at 13 cm on the right IJV and 17 cm on the left IJV, however confirmed with a chest x-ray after the insertion. Blood should be easily aspirated from each lumen and then flush them with saline. If blood can't be aspirated, it could be due to misplacement of the CVL. Hemodialysis central lines needs to be locked with pure heparin. Suture the catheter in place. The suture should not be too tight to avoid tissue ischemia. Apply a sterile dressing and request a chest x-ray. Watch out for pneumo or hemothorax. The tip of the CVL should sit vertically in the superior vena cava. The high approach to IJV insertion. The insertion point is at the level of the superior border of the thyroid cartilage at about the level of C4 and on the medial border of the sternocleidomastoid. The needle trajectory should be directed caudally at 30 degrees angle towards the ipsilateral nipple. Upon locating the vein, the typical Seldinger technique is used to insert the CVL. Alternative sites include the femoral vein. In the femoral triangle, typically the femoral vein lies medial to the femoral artery, which lies medial to the femoral nerve. The femoral vein is often overlaid by the superficial femoral artery. Variable anatomy means that femoral access can sometimes be difficult unless under ultrasound guidance. This route is commonly used in children but is often a last resort in adults due to high infection rate. Subclavian veins are usually a better alternative in adults. The subclavian vein extends from the axillary vein from the outer border of the first rib to the medial border of the scalenous anterior muscle uniting with the internal jugular veins to form the brachiocephalic vein. Important relations include anteriorly the clavicle, posteriorly the subclavian artery, and inferiorly the dome of the pleura. The insertion point of the CVL is 1 cm below the midpoint of the clavicle and direct the needle towards the suprasternal notch. Other alternative sites are the median cubital veins and the basilic vein. Peripheral long lines can be inserted via these veins and has fewer complications. However, the CVL tip may fail to pass beyond the acute curve at the clavi pectoral fascia. Fluids cannot be infused rapidly due to the increased catheter length. These are my references. Thank you.